Hello, everyone. Dear colleagues, friends, coffee lovers. Uh, I, I'm really, really happy because I'm today here. And uh, Julio, Henry, congratulations on what you did on this event. And I hope you're going to continue in future. Uh, I would like, first of all, to make big, big thanks to our host in uh, our host, uh, Rafael Silva from C Cafe for wonderful three days and excellent experience. And another thanks to my friends, from Luis, from, who came from China to listen this, uh, <laughs> to listen me this. Today I'm going to talk to you about the roaster guy to entering in Eastern Europe market. We're going to talk uh, what is coffee profile of other countries, what you can expect if you come on this market, and if you are selling coffee on our market, to see uh, how you can do on the best way. Uh, I, I separate my, my presentation on uh, five, uh, five different bullets. So I'm gonna, in the beginning, I'm gonna tell you about Turkish influence. We were about 500 years under the Turkish empire, so there is a, a, a very, very big influence on our taste profile, coffee profile, uh, and what we are consuming today. After that, we're gonna talk about specialty coffee development, market adjustment to specialty coffee price, rise of the coffee imports in Eastern Europe, and the market overview, and uh, uh, future trends. Uh, Eastern Europe, uh, maybe some of, the, of, of you doesn't know where is it, but it's a, uh, it's a eastern part and there is no, I, when I was preparing this uh, lecturing, I didn't find a very clear definition what is the Eastern Europe. There is a lot of definition, but for, for me, and what I'm going to focus today is this country uh, is this country around the Serbia. Sorry. Uh, we are starting uh, 500 years ago. Serbia was influenced by Ottoman culture. Uh, in early 16th century, we have the first coffee, coffee shop, coffee house in the Europe. And on Serbian, it's Kafana. That means coffee house. After four or five hundred years ago, we are getting the espresso, so we have two different uh, special dates in, in our history. It's five hundred years ago and late 1970s. Uh, Serbia had the first kapana, which means coffee house in Europe. It was almost uh, one century before the London, Vienna, Leipzig and Marseille. Uh, some fun, fun facts about uh, Kapana or coffee house, it was that, that in that time they only served coffee. It only, only uh, Christian weren't allowed to, to enter in that. And uh, coffee was only drink. Uh, every cup of the coffee has a six beans and it serves in small cup. I'm going to talk to you later about that. It's a, it's a uh, preparation of coffee in uh, Ibrik. Uh, so, Turkish coffee is a style of coffee prepared in Ibrik. It's very fine, uh, it's a dark roast, very fine uh, uh, grind, and it's made with uh, boiled water when it gets 100 degrees. Uh, it's very popular, not popular, it's almost 90% of our Eastern European market, and it's mainly, mainly uh, consumed with very dark roast and a lot of robusta. Uh, this is the Ibrik, and this is one of the traditional way how, how they did it, but today they use the regular machine. Uh, in Serbia, it's, uh, drinking of coffee is an uh, essential part of our tradition and mentality, so, and habits in every day. So when we ask someone to go to coffee, it doesn't mean that we are going to, to have a beverage. That means that we are going out, we're going to spend some nice, nice time together, and, and, and maybe we're not going to even drink a coffee. So, when you ask someone for coffee, that means let's have a good time together. And I think, especially uh, not in Serbia, so that all Eastern Bloc uh, have the same habits. Today, 
Uh, coffee is indispensable part of every household in our, reg our region. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit how specialty coffee get to Serbia. We were uh, uh, late a lot of for, for that trend. We lost first and second wave of specialty coffee, but in 2010 we, we had one coffee shop. In next four years it, it was open only two, and finally in 2014 we opened first uh, our coffee shop. It was it was pilot project of me and my partner Gary, and we because we didn't have uh, some place where to drink specialty coffee, we opened the one like a pilot project, and I'm going to tell you later about what's happened next. The first cafeteria was open. Sorry, just a, uh, first cafeteria was open in 2014, and. As I said, it was a pilot project, but we, uh, we were packed from the beginning. We didn't have even a roastery. We was import some specialty coffee from, from Europe, and it was like a really tough time for us. We opened that coffee shop, and it was packed from the first day. Uh, in the next couple of years, we, was, we, we, we start opening more and more, and today, today, we're gonna ha today we have uh, about 50 coffee shops in two, in two cities. In, in, two, in two countries, in the six different cities. Uh, I'm sorry, but I think this is not uh, the fi final presentation. Just to check something. I lost some of my slides. Can you... Uh, it's not final version of my presentation. Okay, let's freestyle. Uh, in our coffee shop, we have three different uh, categories. One is Grand Cru, one is the selection, and another is, uh, another is blend. So, as you can see on the uh, graphic, the, the most selling coffee, about 50%, is, uh, is Grand Cru. Uh, uh, another two categories is, cafe, is cafeteria, blend, and selection. Uh, in that uh, category, uh, the most selling, uh, the most selling coffee, Grand Cru, is the uh, Brazilian coffee, Colombian coffee, and Cuban coffee. That's mean because our market lo loves taste profile of chocolate, full body. They love nuts to see, so they they are afraid and they're not not gonna drink uh, uh, acidity. They want, don't want to try acidity in our coffee. So uh, you will see later, the filter coffee is very very. Uh, we have very, very low sale, but in future, I hope how our market develops that we're gonna that we're gonna increase that number. Uh, th this is something about our coffee, uh, Cuba Cerrado Lavado. That's one of the most selling coffee. Colombia Supremo, Brazil Black Diamond. We made a very interesting story about this coffee. It's not very expensive and not uh, the best coffee on the market, but uh, we, five years ago, we decided to put in a black cup, and in that black cup, it was different from all cup that we have in our coffee shop. We put a diamond on that coffee, and it was one of the best coffee. So, it's not the, the most, it's not the best coffee, it's not the cup of excellence, but our marketing team did, did a great job and now we, this is the most selling coffee in our coffee shops. Uh, probably, as you know, the Europe is the world's largest coffee market. So 32% uh, of global, global coffee consumption is, is in Europe. So, but uh, Eastern, Europe, Eastern Europe is 30% uh, is, uh, of Europe. And now we have consumption around 6.5%. So, in future, we, we, we see enormous potential uh, to get 30% of coffee consumption in Europe. So, coffee producers from, from this territory and countries should look, look on our market very carefully because I think that we have uh, probably 4 to 500% uh, space for development, increase, increase to sale, in sales. Uh, 
there is a graphic how how copy consumption goes uh, last last five years. We see that in every year the Europe Europe was the biggest coffee. Europe was leading coffee consumption, and that's going to be good reflection of Eastern Europe. That's the slide that I already thought about 6.0%. Uh, the largest coffee suppliers uh, in Europe are Vietnam, uh, Vietnam Robusta and Brazil. So that's because the, now, in this moment, we are consumptioning the most instant coffee and low quality coffee. In future, how we, gonna, how we are developing, how specialty coffee becoming important, that's, that's going to change. The, the, we're going to be more uh, oriented to El Salvador, Guatemala, and countries nearby. The second largest importer in uh, Eastern Europe was Bulgaria. After that, going Czech Republic, Slovakia. And as you can see, uh, the all three biggest copy importers in Europe are now in European Union. So there is a plenty of countries which, which are not already in, in EU. That's country like Serbia, Bosnia, uh, Kosovo, uh, Montenegro, Macedonia. So you can market about, uh, about probably 50 to 60 million people, which is not European Union, but it will, it will become, in, I think, in the next five, five to seven years. This is a slide about uh, green coffee imports. Very interesting thing, uh, thing is that uh, when, I, when I was researching for statistics, that uh, uh, mainly the all Eastern European country we are importing coffee from Germany or from Netherlands. So there is no direct, direct trade with uh, farmer or producer. So always is someone between who is uh, taking care about import. Uh, the European brand and coffee shop market grew 3.0% in 2019, uh, matching the total nearly 30, 38,000 outlets. As we see as yesterday, the Lewis mentioned that uh, the London has uh, 3,000, three, uh, one city has 3,000 3, coffee shops. You see, you have 30% of Europe who has 38 outlets. So probably in the next five to seven years in Eastern Europe, we're going we're gonna to reach probably uh, 100,000 of coffee shop outlets. In future, as I said, uh, the, our customers will be, will be ready and they're they, they going to go with that strength to pay much, much more for quality coffee and they're going to look for the quality coffee. Uh, just to to support this my story about Eastern Europe development, I'm going to tell you cafeteria plan for uh, next five years. Today we, gonna, we, today we have 50, 50 outlets, but we plan in next five years to have 150 outlets. Uh, we are spending about 120,000 kilograms of specialty coffee today, but it's going to be probably three times more in next five years. New country which we are targeting is Croatia, Slovenia, Georgia, Bulgaria, Belarus, and Moldova. Um, I didn't mention Ukraine and Russia because I don't know what's going to happen there, but this is the, the plan, and that's our strategic mission, not go on the west, we are going on the, on the east because see the great, great potential of Eastern market. From our point of view, the, the western market is rich, uh, there, there is a habit, there is a culture, but uh, if, if we are looking for, uh, for a progress and if, if, we, if we are looking for sales, I see that on the right side of Europe. Uh, copy trends in our region is almost the same. We are following the trends from Europe. Some, some trends, uh, some trend, the trends comes uh, very quick, but we need, uh, we need time to adopt. So, Nitro, Nitro came one or two years ago, and it's still not popular. Now, now what is popular, it's called brew. That's, that's serving in Europe or US for the last 10, 15 years. In, in Eastern European market, it's just becoming big. 
filter copy, my nightmare. It's, uh, it's about 2% of our sale, and it's a shame because we have really great coffee, and we, we don't have market for that. We are pushing that, we are trying, but people, people connecting peop, uh, filter coffee in our region with tea, and they want strong, bold coffee with, uh, with uh, chocolate flavor, with full body, but I think in future, we are focusing and we will, as we, we uh, went to the specialty, we're going to uh, win with this. This is the trend with matcha green tea, which was adopted very fast. We, uh, we started that two years ago and now is in top, top five uh, uh, sales in our coffee shop. Uh, this is the market close up. So I decide some country, choose some country around the Serbia to show you overall market close up. So the one of the most uh, uh, country with the most coffee, specialty coffee shop are Romania with 136 and Hungary with 178. Other country, you see, you don't have anywhere more than 40 uh, different uh, specialty coffee ch uh, chain or a single unit. In Serbia, with uh, 27 specialty coffee shop, we have 40 locations. So, in this region, so on uh, of Sopra, uh, it's uh, old Yugoslavia. There is a plenty, plenty place for I think four, five hundred coffee shops in next couple of years. The future of a specialty coffee shop in Eastern, as I said, Yugoslavia, ex-Yugoslavia, Moldavia, Belarus, there is a high, high potential for, for us like a coffee shop and a big potential for you like a coffee producer or trader. So don't, don't forget uh, and put focus on this market because in the next five years it's going gonna, it's gonna to boom. And for for all, this uh, for all this progress and succeed, we need the knowledge. So, when we start uh, nine, nine years ago, in, in Serbia we had one or two barista and one roaster. Now, we, we alone have more than one, 150 barista and we have four roast, roasters. So, knowledge is a basis for achieve a greater sex. Greater sex. Thank you very much and I hope it was good. Thank you.